Although Sid Roth was something more. And my guest is Steve Swanson. Uh, Steve has a commission from God to create an atmosphere where signs and wonders happen. And you told me, Steve, just as we uh, were starting the show, uh, that this past weekend, without even laying hands on anyone in a worship concert, uh, what happened to this man that was clinically blind in one eye? Well, he'd been, uh, he'd been in a car wreck, and he'd broken several of the bones around the, the eye socket and was you know, clinically blind in his right eye, and that came from an accident. And during the worship, he felt heat, and he felt the presence of God, and he, he wore glasses, and he, as he was on the floor on his knees, the Lord told him just to take off his glasses, and, and he, he was looking at the carpet. It covered his left eye, and he could see the fibers in the carpet, and it wasn't shag carpet. It was pretty tight-knit carpet, and he just like he, uh, just began to praise the Lord, and he gave his testimony, and the whole place just erupted in thanksgiving to the Lord. I thought that was pretty amazing. From uh, going, you know, going from, it reminds me, uh, I don't know if, if it was, no, I think someone shared it once, and I grabbed hold of this vision, that in the last days, and I know you'll agree with me, Steve, when I say we're in the last of the last days, in these yeah. last of the last days, I see football stadiums jam-packed with people that love God, worshiping God, they, and I see the presence, the manifest presence of God so tangible that you can feel his presence. No one will ever pray, lay hands on the sick. They won't even have to mm. have a prayer for the sick. But in the midst of that glory, people will walk in sick and crippled and blind and, uh, and cancer, and they'll walk out totally free. And I don't believe it's that far off. No, absolutely. I mean, that's the power of his presence. And when we all get into the power of his presence, anything can happen. Well, speak, I, 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 I want to get to know you a little bit better. I want, I want our uh, mishpacha, our family, to get to know you a little bit better. Um, uh, your, your dad was a Pentecostal uh, pastor uh, at six, saved, spirit-filled. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's unusual. But the next one is really blows you out of the water. At eight, you're leading worship? Yeah. yeah I was, I, well, our house was attached. Attached to the church, basically, we lived in the parsonage, and it was attached to the church. And my mom played piano, and they would uh, have me get up and kind of uh, pretend like I was conducting the, the people at church. It was, it was neat. And but my mom said, by the age of eight, I was singing harmonies with her, hmm. and uh, just just leading people in worship at the age of eight. And 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 <laughs> uh, th this is hard for me to comprehend, though, as a kid. I mean, I wasn't saved till I was 30, so it's hard for me to even relate to this. But as a kid, my notes tell me you would lose yourself in worship. Do you remember that? Absolutely. Uh, I would have the opportunity. We had a piano in our house. We had a piano in the church and an organ in the church. So I was surrounded by an instruments. And that was I was just drawn to it. In fact, in fact as a little kid, when I was uh, teething, we had we still had this piano, and <laughs> as I was as I was teething, my mom would play the piano, and I'd come up to the piano and chew my gnaw my teeth on the piano. We still had that piano that has my teeth marked in it <laughs> from a little kid, and I would I would just lose myself in, in worship. But it was just something that was I grew up in, and it, it was always there and always uh, and always uh, reinforced with positive uh, parenting and. And good morals, and and it, it's just something I was called to do, now, now, born now, to do. Now, out of curiosity, as a young child losing yourself in worship, do you ever remember uh, an encounter of some sort, feeling the presence of God? I mean, there had to be an incentive for you to lose yourself in worship. Yeah, well, you, 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 one in particular, uh, we would travel. And we go into these uh, great kind of grange halls, and the metal seats, you know, the folding metal chairs. Uh, and as a kid, as uncomfortable as they can be, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as a kid, my mom would sing, and she had a very high, beautiful soprano voice. 
And I remember I would just lean my head against those metal chairs, and I could hear the sound vibrating from her hmm. voice off the off the metal chair, and I would just sit there in tears because overwhelmed by just the sound of that and the presence of God. And uh, I'd be in these meetings and just understanding the, the presence and the, and the freedom that I grew up in. It was, it was a really amazing thing, and I was really drawn to that. That, that sound of worship. Well, what a great heritage uh, that you were raised that way. Uh, in fact, I have another quote of yours. Uh, uh, and when you were at the piano, that's where you met God and he met you. Absolutely. Um, started playing when I was six years old. And, you know, we got to, got to the point where I could play some of the songs that we, we sang. We did real simple songs, three chords, you know, and I got to where I could play the songs, and I would just lock myself in that church and just just worship the Lord as a little kid. I remember that. And I, I there are times I would just sit and play and just weep. It'd be just me, hmm. and and I truly could sense uh, God's hand on me at an early age. You, you, even like, even back like, then, you had such a tender heart for God. That's what I'm grasping. Absolutely. Uh, but something changed in high school. Uh, the spirit of the age got a hold of you. It's hard to yeah. believe you put a foundation in, but you know there's a scripture, train up a child in the ways of the Lord, and when they're old, right. they'll not depart. Right. So you, you, it, 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 in, in, in high school, there was a change. You saw big money. Uh, you um, uh, you did commercials and things. I mean, there was one point where you, you went in a studio for 20 minutes and you made $20,000. Uh, but there was some, there, there, there was, you knew the difference. Your mind was saying one thing and your spirit was desperate for something more. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, you know, I, I wrote a song. I used to be a songwriter many years ago. And, yeah. and the name of the song was, There Must Be Something More. And you know this as well as I do. Artists mm -hmm. or songwriters, we write what's in our heart. And even as a Jew that didn't know my left hand from my right hand when it came to God, um, yeah. I knew there was something more. Uh, but you, were, you, you had already had experience. You for sure knew there was something more. Yeah, absolutely, and that that was part of this guardian to keep me <laughs> out of real trouble. But I mean, I, I found trouble, uh, you know, and that the the lucrative part of it was attractive, you know, and I could actually make money doing what I love to do, and that you know, play music. But at the same time, there was always that that voice, you know, saying, "I'm I'm here whenever you want to come back." And I always knew that there's something more. It just got to the point where you just realize that this is a dead end. And so, you turn what, your calling. what I love is how God gently, step by step, although this might have been a two by four, uh, tell me about the encounter you had on the train. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, well, at, I don't know if you've been on the trains before or where listeners have been on the trains, but in the train, I have. If you're in the. If you're in the dining car, they they set you with people. I mean, you don't usually get your own uh, table for dinner. And so we're sitting there at dinner, and some lady comes in, and she's got this flowing blonde hair. And I was, you know, I was I was actually on my way to California to do a gig or something like that. And I'm with my wife Lisa, and and this lady out of out of nowhere, and I I'm, I'm actually sitting there across from her, and out of nowhere she goes she goes up. Uh, you're running from God. She points her finger at me. She goes, you're running for God, and he's got a call on your life and a marvelous plan. But you're running from him and, and running from the call. And she tells me that night, the hair on the back of my neck stood up, and I I, I realized, I, yes, she's right. And the God had already been stirring in my heart. But then as soon as she appeared, I mean, that's what she did. She sat down at the table, said that, and got up and left. We she never, didn't. Wait, we wait, wait, she, wait a second. She didn't eat anything. She didn't eat anything. She just sat there for just that time. She's kind of like nervously sitting down at first, and then she looked at me and she said it. And then I'm I'm sitting there going, "Wow." I now, right now, if that, wait a second. Could that have been an angel? But you know what? It, if it wasn't an angel, it, <laughs> it should have been because 
it was at a point in time, it was right at the perfect timing in in my life that I needed to hear that. And from coming from a complete stranger or, uh, you know, uh, entertaining a stranger, that was the perfect time. And God knew exactly what I needed at the right time. And it's kind of interesting. I'm on the train. I'm on these rails. And it kind of signifies this journey I'm on. And all of a sudden, boom. And it changed it changed my whole perspective. Okay, so she, she just got up and walked out? Did I mean, yeah, that that seems strange without eating. It was, it was really strange. And, uh, I mean, Lisa was there with me, and she goes, was that an angel? I go, I don't know. It, I mean, it was, it was a person, you know, it, flesh and blood. It was a person. And, but to get up and walk away, I was thought strange. No, but, but, I have, but I have to tell you, I have seen angels that look like people to me. Uh, watch who you entertain unawares. <laughs> Any, anyway, yeah, that's right. shortly thereafter, you get invited, Just uh, and, and you can see God's hand on this, on his life. Yeah. You get invited for a night of worship, and uh, but something you got more than a night of worship. What happened? Oh, oh man. Well, I was invited uh, because one of my one of my gifts are, is to orchestrate. Uh, you know, on the fly. I, I'm, I'm a, and I read music, and so that this um, friend of mine invited me to play the you know string parts and the horn parts for a night of worship. I go, oh, sure, why not? And they go, yeah, we can, we can pay you. We can give you an honorarium. I didn't even know what an honorarium was. But we can give you an honorarium. And uh, so I go, sure, I'll do it. And so I get there, and it was it was a God set up because they had a they had a choir there, about 60 people in the choir, and, and it was a, a blended choir, a half, you know, very integrated choir, and they're singing this gospel music, and I'm and that to touch my, it, it just touches my soul with when a choir opens up their voice and starts singing praises, and I can't even read the, <laughs> I, can't, I can't even read the music. I'm weeping so much, and they 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 gathered around me and they laid their hands on me, and I got, I got re 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 baptized in the spirit, <laughs> um, and it was it was a shirt changing point in my whole life. That that one, and I can I can define it right down to that, that one night, and I can see myself on my knees right there when everybody's gathered around me, calling me back in. It was awesome. Now you make the statement that, uh, and and you are a psalmist, that you have a psalmist anointing, but yeah. we all have psalmist anointing. Even me, I can't even carry a tune. I can't play it. Do you know, as a kid, I, I, I um, had visions of being a, uh, a great musician, and I would take lessons for about three weeks on drums, and when I couldn't do anything but make noise, I said, well, I'll go to saxophone, and then when I couldn't do anything after three weeks on that, I went to clarinet, and then I went to guitar, and, uh, and then I went out the window with my music. <laughs> uh, so you're telling me I'm a psalmist? You are a psalmist because <laughs> <laughs> you carry that anointing because you you love the Lord and then people out there who say well I can't sing and I can't play an instrument so you know how am I supposed to be called to worship and how and psalmist anointing the psalmist anointing is is simply releasing the power and the presence of God in your worship uh, for instance when they when they called for the minstrel they would just just release the power and presence of God and. And uh, Saul was the evil spirit departed from Saul. So there's there's an example of that. But us, as worshipers, called as worshipers, you don't have to sing, you don't have to play, you you just worship and you create an atmosphere for the Lord to move in. Well, I understand uh, something. I understand that we have an enemy in the invisible world, and I understand this enemy cannot stand worship <laughs> unto God. I mean, he he hates that. And you're telling me that I can worship God, whether I play an instrument or not, whether I sing on tune or not. I want you to explain to me how I can worship God, because I know, I know this. If I can worship God, I can still the avenger, the enemy. I can silence him. I, I can drive him batty, or we Jewish people have a term, meshuggah, 
crazy. Much sugar. And, and that's why I want to get in the hands of everyone uh, that is uh, watching or listening to us right now. Uh, your book, Heaven's Symphony, I mean, he, he explains that all of creation is worshiping God. And we can join in with all of creation to worship God. And, and I mean, when, when people read this and understand this, um, it, it opens up vistas. And uh, yeah, if you're a worship leader, it'd be great. But you know what? If you just plain love God, it'd be one Absolutely. of the best things to ever happen to you. And then the three CDs, uh, I have to tell you, some of your music makes me happy. I mean, what would the world pay to just be happy? Uh, but but you can, you make some happy music, uh, but it's way beyond that. Uh, there's three worship CDs we selected. One is on an exclusive basis. Um, uh, the, the other carries what's called the breaker anointing and a spirit revival. Uh, and the third one opens you up to divine encounters through worship. Uh, and... Uh, I believe that many of you are going to get healed when you uh, hear this music. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, uh, a picture's worth a thousand words and listening to the music. But tell me very, very briefly uh, about the dream you had in which God said, come on up. Oh, wow. Uh, that was an interesting dream. I actually dreamt I was at a, a, a James Brown uh, concert and i was sitting in the front row and he was singing the song get on up it's one of his popular hits and i i in the dream i got up on the platform i said stop stop so in the middle of this concert and it was a big concert there were several thousand people there and in the middle of the concert the whole thing stopped and he looked at me and he's like what i go you got it wrong it's not get on up it's come on up Come on up here, and I will show you the things that will take place after this. And immediately when I said that, in the dream, over the top of the platform was a scroll. And the scroll unfurled and rolled down over the top of the over the stage. And, and the word started going across from the, from the verses of the song. A door standing open, one seated on the throne, surrounded right by a rainbow like a gleaming precious stone, his eyes a flame of fire, his hair as white as snow, angels, elders, creatures crying, holy, holy is the Lord. And I'm in the dream, I'm writing this down, I'm copying what is on the scroll, and they, those two verses came from that scroll in the dream for the song, Come On Up. Well, I believe that when you get his three CDs and his book called Heaven's Symphony, it is going to open up a realm of worship for you where all things are possible. Uh, we're making that all available for uh, a um, investment of $45, and it's time for you to come on up.
1-800-447-2697. Sid Roth with something more, and I have to tell you something. Uh, I am ready to not just come up, uh, Steve Swanson. <laughs> I want to stay up. I want to be 24-7 in the spirit. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I have to ask you a couple of really strategic things happened to you. Uh, you, you went to a worship conference with uh, Kent Henry. Uh, yeah. And um, at the conference, you had a vision. Tell me about it. Oh, it was amazing. Now, I'd just taken the position of a worship leader after uh, in a uh, Foursquare church. And so they had some extra money in the budget to send us out to St. Louis uh, for that conference. And I'm in this conference, and I'm watching Kent lead from the piano. And it's like I have my eyes closed, and it felt like these golden threads were circling around me, engulfing me in this. And I could feel like the warmth of the Holy Spirit. And you have to under, uh, understand, it's been a while since I'd been in that place, and, and it was just like, God was wrapping me in this cocoon of his presence. So I look up at Kent, and I have to rub my eyes because as he's singing, I see, I see my head on his body. And he's sitting at the piano, and he's singing prophetically and singing in the Spirit. And I see my head on his body, and I'm like, you know, I'm thinking, I feel like I'm out of my body. I feel like I'm dying. And I'm going, what is my head doing on that man's body up there while he's leading worship? But it, it was just God showing me what was going to take place, and uh, yeah, he, he was giving. He was saying, "You see what he's doing? I want you to yeah. do it." That's what that's what it says to me. But then shortly thereafter, it went to another meeting with Ken Henry, and he actually prophesied over you. What happened? Well, here's the amazing thing: I just I didn't even meet him at that conference, mm -hmm. and then about uh, nine months later. The, the pastor said, hey, we're having Ken Henry come to our church. I go, you're kidding me. <laughs> and so uh, he comes to our church in Portland, and he calls me out, and he starts prophesying over me about songs from heaven, about the sound of heaven coming out from me. I mean, everything that I saw up on that platform, he's prophesying that to me. And I'm, I'm telling you, God hit me with a hammer, and it was good. It was a love hammer. And <laughs> I just... I just realized that, man, I'm on track. I'm, I'm doing the right thing. And those words that he said to me, it's like, I see you. you're like me. He even said it. He said, oh, you're like me. You know, you're, you've got the, the same uh, calling on your life and just prophesying songs. And from that moment on, songs just started pouring out of me. Mm. Uh, and, and then uh, in 99, you're at an IHOP meeting and, uh, uh, and God speaks to you. What did he say? Oh, he's, they're singing. At first, I didn't know what was going on because they're just playing two chords over and over again. It's back, back when they first started out. And, and I was trying to get over the two chords that they were playing because it was just two hours of two chords. And I couldn't really hear what they're saying, but God unlocked something in my heart. And all of a sudden, I could hear what they were singing. They were singing the songs of heaven. They were singing the songs of Revelation. And they were singing about what's going on in heaven. And I remember just standing there weeping. And it's like I could hear the, the voice of God in my spirit say, Steve, I, this is what I want you to do. I want you to sing the songs of heaven, sing what's going on, and release that atmosphere on the earth, the sounds of heaven on earth. And it, it changed, changed perspective uh, of, of what I was, the call on, on my life and, and the call of the music and, and the what, what I'm supposed to release on, on the earth. This release the sounds of heaven on earth. And then you got more. Uh, you were exhausted. You were at, at another local uh, uh, worship uh, prayer meeting. Uh, and God spoke to you. And uh, he said, sit up and worship me. What <laughs> happened? I just said, I was, I was, kind of leaning over my piano. We, I would do four hours, two hours of just playing piano. And nobody's in the in the room except for one other singer and one prayer leader. And nobody's in the in the congregation. It's just the three of us in this little house of prayer. We're just listening up prayer. And I'm just kind of playing and I'm tired. And I actually physically feel 
hands come up from under my armpits and lift me up. And it's like I could, it, it was like a command, sit up and worship me. And I knew who was. I knew who was saying that. And so I started to just pour everything out I had. And all of a sudden, this this realm of sound opened up. And I'm looking around. I'm going, what? Where's that sound coming from? It's just me on the piano, and it's one singer. And the prayer leader was just kind of had her eyes closed. And it was just the two of us, but I'm starting to hear these voices crying, Worthy. And we were, we were singing Worthy. And I'm going, where are those other voices coming from? And I'm watching my hands play. And I'm hearing female voices on my right hand singing Worthy. And they were following everything I was playing. And so then on my left hand, I'm hearing men sing Worthy. And they were following everything I was playing. Yeah, but there's only a few people. Oh, wait, wait a second, Steve. There are only a few <laughs> people in the room. Who are you hearing? I, it, it was a realm of heaven that opened up. I, it was so uh, such a spontaneous moment. And the sound of the voices is, I can't even describe what it was like. It was like they were instruments, but they were singing worthy. And, and they were following what I was playing. And to tell you the truth, Sid, I couldn't tell if if they were following what I was playing or I was following what they were singing. It was one of those moments in, it was a Kairos moment. It was a moment appointed in time where heaven touched earth and it opened up and it was a unison, it was a unity moment. I call it my, the simultaneous transcription of heaven because I couldn't tell if they were singing what I was playing or I was playing what they were singing. It was a, it was just this moment. And then there's this high voice that comes in that I wasn't even playing. It was like a soprano sustained over the whole thing. And I'm I'm just overwhelmed by this sound. And nobody else heard it. And but I heard it. I heard it and that it changed everything in my worship. How did how did it change your worship? Give me give me some for instances. <clears throat> It put me on a on a quest because once once that realm opens up a realm like that where you're here and stuff you want to you want to recreate that you want to somehow release that on the earth so I was on this quest to find that that sound and and release it when I'm leading worship so people can connect with that also. You know, because, I mean, this is that this is what I heard. I want you to hear it. And so I went out and bought a whole bunch of different keyboards and, you know, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm creating all these sounds. <laughs> my, whole, my whole worship changed. It did. It went from kind of sing-songy, you know, uh, to, to like this uh, just heavenly, ethereal uh, type of music that was just like, oh, it's all focused on, on what we're, on heaven, and it's the sound of heaven. It's, it's, it and it's so, so, so if I'm hearing you right, because of that defining moment, because of that divine encounter, uh, yeah. you, 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 you realize there was so much more to worship uh, than you ever oh. thought possible. It, it just expanded your consciousness of it. Do people have divine encounters when they sit in, under your worship? Yeah, I mean, people, people come up and say, I saw this and I saw that and I heard this. They're hearing things that aren't there. And I love that when those, when that opens up in worship, when when people are activated in the presence of God, that they're just they're so caught up in his presence that God opens that realm for them too. I mean that is one of the joys of my heart to hear people say, Well I saw this and I, I wrote this down and I, I, I painted this and I oh it, 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 it's it's awesome, and God is just calling us to experience that all of us as worshipers. And uh, uh, tell me, tell again. me about because our time is slipping away, and I've every one of these subjects I'd like to. Well, I'm so glad we have your book, Heaven Symphonies, because the same way God opened up this whole realm to Steve, God wants to open this whole realm 
up to you. And then three, we've selected three of his best CDs. The, uh, the first one we have on an exclusive basis. It's uh, five brand new worship songs and five classics. Then uh, the second one, it literally carries the breaker anointing and the spirit of revival. It's just, I mean, you'll be so joyful when you listen to this music. And the third one is an invitation to experience the divine encounters uh, through worship. But tell me briefly about the prophecy. I, I recently interviewed Randy Clark, and I, I know that the Holy Spirit picked certain people out for him to prophesy over. Uh, did he know you when he prophesied over you? He didn't know my name. I mean, he had been to our church in Florida, uh, but he didn't know he didn't know my name. He just called me a worship leader from Florida. And what did he prophesy? He, he prophesied, um, he, and it was in the middle of his impartation uh, service. And Randy carries such a powerful impartation gift. And I, I was a little bit apprehensive of it, actually, because when you see people, you know, shaking and falling and crying, and I, you know, when he's and he's saying sometimes the, the presence of God is so powerful on you, you can't stand. I'm going, I don't know if I want this, but I'm receptive. And all, as soon as I lifted my hands, Randy spoke out. He goes, worship leader from Florida, God is going to open up realms of heaven like you've never heard before. And here he, he said this. He goes, what you've heard in the past is nothing compared to what he was going to give you right now in Jesus' name. And he just pointed, didn't touch me, he just pointed at me, and, he, and then he said, Father, I bless what you're doing. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was amazing. And at, as soon as he said that, I heard the sound. It was like... <laughs> and it sounded like a fax transmission. You know, the, the, the garbled thing, and I'm right. watching these notes roll through my eyelids. I have my eyes closed. I'm seeing these notes go up and down, just scrolling across. And my head is following those notes. And I'm, I'm literally receiving this download from heaven. And all these notes are coming in this zip file, and it's just going into my spirit. <laughs> and they said I, I, was, I was shaking and, and watching these notes go for 45 minutes. My my fingers were following the notes, and then all of a sudden the sound came up, and I I fell, I fell to the to, to the ground, and began to go into these other visions and encounters. And just an amazing experience. That was another defining moment. God has these defining moments in our lives. He's what, calling us to these divine encounters. What I what I, and the divine encounters are not for Steve Swanson. He imparts this in his music. So those three worship CDs and Heaven Symphony we're making available for an investment of $45. I say investment because your money will be poured into Jewish evangelism. And I'm going to tell you something. When that precious Jewish anointing commingles with the Gentile Christian anointing, it makes a complete dwelling place for God in the spirit and we're doing everything we possibly can at this set time to favor zion to reach jewish people with the gospel so when you get these tools that will be life changing for you as a matter of fact the glory just uh it just pours out of his music and in the glory uh you teach about this and you speak on it uh, you you talk about deliverance of all kind takes place explain deliverance well people people get healed in, in the glory it's the glory presence of god when he when he comes in i i have this song called your presence changes everything and in the song it says anything can happen in the middle of your presence like you're saying i mean demons flee but it's the light of his presence that comes in and it's in the glory of god you see the glory is, is a realm of ease it's, you know, when you were in the presence, you could feel God's glory. There's just like this peace that comes and that the power of his presence comes. And it's like there could be no disease in the presence of his glory. It has to go. All those oppression, the, 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 the thoughts are replaced by his glory. And it, it's like turning on the light. When If darkness is in you of oppression or if you need deliverance or you're feeling 
if you're feeling like, you know, you're just, the storms around you, uh, that peace comes in. The light of God turns on the light, and all of that stuff has to go away. It has to go away. And that's the, that's the, the, the power of His presence. And it, and it comes in worship. And like we said, it's not about just someone who can sing and play an instrument. It's, it's about all God's children have the, have the ability to worship. It's, it's something that we're born with. Uh, you, you know, again, I want you to hear a selection songs of deliverance. And as you're hearing this, Rick, and in fact, when we come back, uh, Steve, I want you to explain how we all can hear the songs uh, 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 at the rocks are singing. Everything in nature is singing. Mm-hmm. They're, they're singing the from heaven. They're singing from earth. Uh, and it's all merging in a gigantic, you oh. call it heaven symphony. Uh, I want to know, you actually pray for people uh, and they can start hearing this, uh, but it's time for you to hear songs of deliverance. song of my king Good Roth with something more. Steve Swanson, uh, you've just been hearing his music. It's music from heaven. Uh, but there are concepts you teach about in your book, Heaven Symphony. Uh, uh, frankly, I've known a few of them, but uh, you put it together and everyone's got to understand this. Uh, people, you know, they, they uh, designate uh, worship leader, intercessor, you know, these titles. But the truth is, we are all created to worship God, and we think it's just the paid professionals. Uh, Steve, that is not true, but I want you to explain to me uh, this, how we can join in heaven's symphony, what that actually means to you. Well, if you if you think about it, worship is not something that we can create, that we can work up. Um, and a lot of times, like you say, in the paid professionals, you know, People have that mindset that they'll come in and say, okay, show me what you got. Well, if you, you, there has to be an understanding that Heaven's Symphony is going on, and it's been going on 
from the beginning of time. And it's not something that we create. It's just something that we step into. So I, I believe the first first step would be just becoming to aware of what's going on in heaven already. There is worship going on uh, 24-7. <laughs> there, there's your first house of prayer 24-7. <laughs> and, and they're constantly saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and is to come. The elders, the creatures, the angels, the, the multitudes are crying this out in a symphony of heaven. So one of one of the keys of us here on earth is, is opening these realms. I, I found that the first key is, is thanksgiving. And thanksgiving is a very powerful key that the Lord has given us to open the realm for the miraculous to happen. You, you know what I find? Most believers will thank God if they've had a major miracle. They've just been healed of cancer. But they're not going to th thank God for all the little things he's doing 24-7 for us. Well, I mean, you, the whole thanks, Thanksgiving is a whole attitude. And here's the key. This is really a key in, in opening miracles. Thanking him before your miracle. Ooh, I and like that. Said, I'm, I'm going to write that one down. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's the whole attitude of Thanksgiving. You know, I, I, my miracle has not showed up yet, but I'm going to thank God for it because I believe it. And then you, you start to understand that there, there is something out there that you can actually see your victory. You can see your miracle. And if you can see it, you can have it. And you can pull that in through Thanksgiving. You, and that just creates that whole realm. It's the key that God has given us to opening the realms of the miraculous. When Jesus was at the tomb of Lazarus, he lifted his eyes and he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. He didn't say he, he didn't say Lazarus come forth yet. He thanked him before he said it. He saw the miracle before it happened and he thanked him for it. There's such power in Thanksgiving. Tell me some more keys. I love that first one. Thank you. But that, to me, that's almost a definition of faith, of biblical faith. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we worship in faith, and, and, and God, is like, his heart is moved by that. I mean, faith in God can move mountains. And, and so it is. It's an attitude of faith. Another key would be praise. Uh, you praise him for his deeds, his acts, his attributes, and then you begin to... I, I love this. I, I've been teaching this lately. It's like we need more songs that speak of God's deeds and his attributes. You're praising. You're magnifying who he is. He's the healer. He's the savior. He's our, he's our soon coming king. He's, he's our deliverer. And you begin to magnify those in worship, and it becomes a reality as you praise him. And praise is the weapon that God has given us to create an atmosphere around us where things can't get at us. I mean, it's like our shield, it's our armor, it's a, it's a sphere of of praise influence that we create around us just by uh, magnifying uh, God. You know, uh, someone explained to me once that there is, you can actually walk in a cylinder of God's light. Can you imagine? Meaning, you're, you're surrounded with God's light. Nothing can penetrate that. Absolutely. And that's your, that's praise. That produce praise produces power. That's exciting. Uh, you know, you also talk about how to unlock God's glory. Uh, and you talk about keys. Tell me about the key that I don't hear enough about. And it's almost, you're almost related to that, what you were just sharing. And that's the key of expectation. Well, yeah, and it, I did, it was very close to that Thanksgiving, because when you come expecting, and I noticed that when we were at the church in Florida, that was the first thing the pastor said, Are you, have you come with expectation? And I, I want to I encourage uh, your listeners out there, when you gather together in his name, come expecting, come expecting God to do something amazing. We should feel that it. we should feel that way every day, whether we even go to a meeting or not. But I'm reminded. <laughs> well, we we become the meeting. We huh. become a, a tent of meeting. We where we we just expect God to do amazing things and God's glory to be to be revealed to us and power released. And that's our worship. That's our 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 establishing our relationship with the Lord and walking 
in that. He's called us to glory and virtue. And we were created in the glory, if you think about it, all the way back to the, the Garden of Eden. We were created in the splendor of his creation, in the splendor of everything that he had created. Then he makes man, and he says, wow, this is very good. And all of his glorious creation is surrounding us. We are created for that realm of his glory. You know, I'm reminded many times uh, when I've been to healing meetings of great evangelists like a Catherine Coleman, people that had marvelous healings would say, and um, it, 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 often, so many times, uh, th they would say, Steve, I knew I was going to be healed. And I often wondered about that. How did they know they were going to, I mean, as a young believer watching this, how did they know? But there is an expectation from meditating on God's word and being in his glory. As a matter of fact, thinking about, uh, talking about glory, uh, when God's, I'm going to read a quote, when God's glory is revealed, power is released. The manifest power of God changes the whole atmosphere around you. Talk to that, Steve. Well, I, I love the scripture that says, when when he appears, we shall be like him, for we will see him as he is. And and there's another scripture that says, we are changed from glory to glory to glory, and the transformation comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So when we're worshiping, we are beholding him. He's appearing to us, and God's glory, he, his whole nature, who he is, is revealed through us. And then his power is released in that as we come into agreement with who he is, the glorious one. And so that manifest power of God, which we have entered in by just by, just by worship and by uh, beholding him and magnifying him, that changes the whole atmosphere around us. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing. If we can just tap, tap into that and understanding that, we are being transformed every time we come to worship. Uh, we are being transformed. It's almost and, like every time I take communion, I believe I'm getting a little more healing. Uh, every time we worship God, we're getting a little more healing, a little more deliverance, a little more revelation. Uh, and with a, with a sense of expectation, I can't wait to get these three CDs into your hand <laughs> and the book, Heaven's Symphony. Uh, this this is really a missing ingredient in most believers' life. Uh, it shouldn't be, Steve, but I really believe it is. Because, again, we've relegated it to the professionals. They take care right. of the worship, not us. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I read something that provoked me to jealousy. Uh, you pray for people to hear Heaven's Symphony from nature and from heaven and from earth. Uh, tell me about one person you prayed for. Well, there was a gentleman from Massachusetts, and I had told him about uh, an encounter I'd had where I'd, I'd heard the trees and I'd heard the, the waves and uh, all creation and, uh, singing and the, releasing the sound. He goes, really? He has the intrigue, and he goes, I want to hear that, I want to hear that. <laughs> So I prayed for him, and he's and he's looking at me, and he goes, ah, I don't hear it, right? So he, he kind of went off and called me back a half hour later. Excuse me. He called me back a half hour later, and he's on the phone, and he's so excited. And he's going, Steve, Steve, I can hear creation. I can hear it. I can hear it. He goes, now, how do you turn it off? <laughs> I go, I can't turn it off. This is something that's going on all around us. And so <laughs> I don't know if it ever got turned off for him. So when we worship, we're joining in everything that God is, <clears throat> even the rocks are worshiping him. Would you pray for everyone right now to hear heaven, to hear Absolutely. the harmony and the, and, and, oh. and the symphony from heaven? Mm, yes. Lord, I just thank you that you are a God that deserves worship and praise that is going on around your throne 24-7. So, Lord, I ask right now that that sound, the sound of heaven and the sound of creation be released to our listeners out there. So, 
to those, Lord, who have an ear to hear, let them let that realm open for them, Lord, that they would be able to become to uh, an awareness of what's already going on and be able to step into that. And Lord, to hear the trumpet, to hear the voice like many waters, and just to hear the, the sea of glass and, and to hear all the elements of worship going on around your throne. And Lord, to hear creation crying out, groaning, the rocks crying out, the trees clapping their hands, the floods lifting up the voice, and the mountains trembling. Lord, I pray that you grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit for each listener who's listening today, and for your whole body, Lord. Open us up to an awareness of your majesty, your glory, and your splendor. And we thank you for it, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you know, another thing that I, I love about your ministry, uh, and I, I, I have to tell you outside of hearing your CDs, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you minister in person. I have not seen you minister in person, but uh, many times you will sing prophecies, you will sing what God's done for you, and it, it just creates such an atmosphere of God's glory. Um, and a lot of you need the atmosphere changed. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Uh, what do you believe is going to happen when they, they hear the song uh, Changing the Atmosphere, Steve? I believe that they'll, they'll be inspired to, to really go for it in praise and to understand that what they declare that is a two-edged sword because we mingle it with his word and we put it to voice with our word. And we and for the listener when they hear this song that they would believe that everything they do in praise it actually changes the atmosphere around them, and they begin to praise him for what they what they what they can see that the Lord is revealing to them. There's a, there's a line in the song. It's not about what you're going through, and I I want your listeners to hear this today. It's not about what you're going through, right? Whoever you are out there, it's not about what you're going through. It's about where you're going to, and your praise is going to get you there. It's time to change the atmosphere. It's changing now. Let the high praises of God be on my
Log on to SidRoth.org today and learn how one new man is the key to unlocking God's greatest blessings. To place a credit card order for today's offer, call anytime at 1-800-447-2697. That's 1-800-447-2697. Or log on to our website at www.sidroth.org. To hear this week's interview or watch archives of our television show, It's Supernatural, visit our website at www.sidroth.org. That's www.sidroth.org. Discover how you can begin watching for free our 24-hour, 7-day-a-week TV network, ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. You can write me at Sid Roth, Post Office Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. That's Sid Roth, Post Office Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278.